So you've retired and you're excited. You're about to start your journey into not having to work anymore. But there's one little thing that a lot of people forget about. Well, they usually don't forget about it. They think about it because they know how scary it can be. And that's health insurance. And we're going to talk about what do you do if you have a health insurance gap, meaning you retire before you hit 65, before you go on Medicare? What are your options? You're leaving your group employer coverage before turning 65, and it can be very stressful for a lot of people. They haven't had to think about health insurance, and now that their employer is you know, dropping them from their coverage, they're on their own, they have to go into the wild world of health insurance, and they can't get on Medicare just yet, and that's a problem for a lot of people. Here's my co-host, Tony Shore. Tony, you've heard this story before. Health insurance. And I've said, I've done a, a short little blurb on how I don't want to hear people being held captive to working because of health insurance. There are alternatives, and I want to talk about them today. Interesting, because, yeah, this is one of the big reasons that I hear a lot of experts or retirement people say, this is why you should not retire early. You can't retire before 65 because of health insurance. And you know, a side note, do not get me started on my opinions on health insurance. You know that. I, I The health insurance companies record billions in net profits every year. You can look it up. Whatever health insurance you use, Blue Cross Blue Shield, or I don't know what the big health insurance there is, but you just look it up and say net profits for, and then the last year or to uh, go when they have numbers. And it's outrageous. And so uh, we have a healthcare crisis in this country, but that leads to your problem that you're pointing out is what if I want to retire at 62, but I don't get Medicare benefits until I'm 65. So what do I do? Isn't COBRA is an option, but COBRA is outrageously expensive, right? Yeah, and it doesn't last forever. Um, there's no. a limit on that. And the COBRA, for those listening, that's a that's a t uh, technical acronym, and it's continuing benefits after your employer uh, severance or you leave the co coverage from your employer. Uh, yeah, it's it's scary world. You know, the big yeah. thing for a lot of people is they don't realize how much insurance costs because right. their employer is paying for a, usually at least half of the bill. And so they don't know what self-employed people pay or people that don't have group coverage it it's pretty darn expensive um it's so, expensive with group coverage and with your employer yes. covering up to half of the cost yeah. and i and, and i agree with you that the insurance in this country is more about profits than health benefits um as a whole the insurance sure. industry really sure. and, and i'm and, not i'm not trying to critique all of capitalism but I, that's just a frustration that's a big part of the problem with healthcare in this country is healthcare is so expensive and health insurance is expensive and hard to get and so yeah yeah so i'm going to give four steps so if you're in this situation where you're like i'm i'm retiring or i can't retire because my my wife's younger than i am and if i leave my employer then she's going to be i can go on medicare but she couldn't so what are we gonna do for right. her you know right. that or you know that's the issue so the first yeah, my step, neighbor worked till 71 because his wife was that much younger the exact scenario and i've mentioned that before my neighbor yeah. and friend tom his wife is a lot younger than him, and he worked for the state uh, of Minnesota up in Minnesota, and he had amazing health insurance through the state. I mean, I think they were paying 135 a month for their whole family. So, no, so they were paying, but the rest of the state of Minnesota was paying for their health insurance through their taxes. But right. And he grass. kept his job. So. He kept his job, though. The point is he kept his job just for the health insurance because she would not be eligible. She didn't work and she would not be eligible for Medicare. And that's it. So 65 is the, is the normal cutoff. Unless you're disabled, you're not going to get Medicare until 65 and right. not everyone wants to wait till 65 to stop working my, mainly because they're just tired and they want to enjoy life while they're young and healthy. Yeah. Uh, or they might be getting unhealthy and they're like, I don't know if I'm going to, if I could do this anymore. So I got to leave. At the same time that they're unhealthy, they're they're needing health insurance, and it's it's a really 
uh, difficult situation. So step one is first, you got to know what your employee plan options are. You might be able to continue coverage. Some government employees can continue coverage for themselves and or their yes. spouse or their family. Um, some can't. You need to know that. You need to know if you can continue for 18 months through COBRA. You need to know what the cost is. And this is where it gets real because you can't you can't just look at your pay stub and say, oh, here's what I pay. You have to then ask, if I leave employment, what will it cost me? Because that's a different story. A lot of times yeah. companies will not continue to subsidize your health insurance. So what do you do? You need to know exactly what your employer plan options are dollar wise so that you can then use that to compare your alternatives. Because if you if you start looking at alternatives and you say, oh, my God, that's just terrible. It's so much more than what I'm paying now. Well, of course, it's going to be. But first, you need to know exactly what you would pay and all the details. You need to understand deductibles. You need to understand what co-pays are and, and, and co-insurance. So it's you just need to learn this stuff. And I find that a lot of people don't really think too hard about it because it's just here are my three choices at work and now when you're on your own you're like oh i gotta figure this really out so step one is really understanding your plan step two is now you gotta look at your local short-term health insurance options now before the affordable care act with obama back in 2010 there were something called short-term health plans and those got eliminated because they weren't meeting the high restrictions that were meant for the Affordable Care Act, but they've come back. So there are short-term health insurance options. Hmm. Um, these are going to be um, non-Affordable uh, Care Act plans. They will have a pre-existing condition clause. They will have larger deductibles and uh, larger costs out of pocket. Um, but they'll relatively they'll be relatively cheaper than if you went through and got an Affordable Care Act plan because the sure. Affordable Care Act plans are required to have a level of of coverage up to here. You may not need all that, so you can look at what your local and I say local because you're usually a network that's localized um, for short term. This is something to look at. Don't think that they've gone away. There are some options now. There's coverage limits. There's loopholes. There's different things you need to bear be aware of, but. For those that are relatively healthy, this might be a really good option. And they used to be limited to less than a year. Now you can go up to three years with these. So you can kind of find something that fits that gap of coverage. Um, so that's not step number two is look at those options. And how do you do that? You find someone that that offers these, a local broker for insurance, health insurance, and talk to them and say, give me my options. I want to see what's outside of the Affordable Care Act. I keep mentioning the Affordable Care Act because that's step number three. You need to understand your Affordable Care Act options. This is healthcare.gov. You can go there. And you need to look at that and learn what this means. What are, what does the healthcare.gov mean? Because we passed that bill. Remember that, Tony? That was a big thing. Yeah. Um, and um, Pelosi, I think it was, said we got to pass it so we can find out what's in it. I think for most people in this country, <laughs> they need to leave work to find out what their alternatives are. Right. Because um, yeah. if there are options, there are options. And this is step three is going to be the option that people need to look at, especially if they're not healthy. If they have a pre existing condition that they want covered, they're not necessarily going to be able to go to a short term health company and say, hey, can you cover me for a year and a half? I have, you know, debil debilitating diseases and and chronic conditions, and you got to cover me for that. The the, the short term plans would say, no, no, we're not covering that. Affordable Care Act plans will be required to cover them, so you need to know this, especially if you're not healthy. Um, yeah, and my my that. love of pizza, Dan, is a considered a pre existing condition by some insurance companies. I found right. that they won't insure me because of my love of pizza. Right. So you would get, if you went to a short-term plan, they would probably put a, disc, a clause on there or like a rider that says we are not going to cover his love of pizza and all conditions related to. So we're talking <laughs> heart, blood, you know, health, mental, physical, yeah. everything that pizza destroys. Very right? little would be covered. Yes. But if you wanted to get covered outside of your group plan, you would go to Affordable Care Act and they would say, well, we, we, we all struggle with pizza. So you're in, right. They can't deny you. Um, 
but it's going to cost, right? So that's step number four, is you need to then understand, and this is the big one, this is the last step, not the last step, but this is the key, and this is what I want to talk about in, in detail, is you need to understand that the healthcare.gov, when it was passed, it was designed to, you know, you can keep your doctor, and, and people still call it Obamacare, because that's what you know, was the term they used back when it was issued. Still, pe people still feel that it's some sort of lesser plan. Like, I don't want to get on the Obamacare. I don't want to go on the health insurance exchanges. I don't want healthcare.gov. Some states like Florida, we don't have a, a local exchange for health insurance. We use healthcare.gov. Some other states have their own local exchange for the entire state. Yeah. So you need to understand it. But the healthcare subsidies are a national thing and it's key that you understand what this means so i'm going to give you an example um and we'll use you tony let's fast forward 30 years and now you're 60 okay sure <laughs> you and your wife um and right now you're covered under your wife's plan because she's got a good coverage sure and she's like tony i'm done i'm retiring we're both 60 i'm calling it quits and you're like wait 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 do we have enough money? Yes, we have enough money. But who's going to cover health insurance? And she's like, well, they won't cover me when I leave. Uh, your company doesn't offer it, so we're on our own. Let's look at the health insurance exchanges. Now, fast forwarding, your kids will be gone. So it'll just be the two of you. Yep. And this is typical for people. 60 years old, two of us, we need coverage for five years. What do we do? Short-term plans only go out maybe three years. We can get a short-term plan every year and switch it. But you're like, hey, I got pre-existing pizza condition. I need coverage. So you look at the healthcare exchanges and you run the numbers and it says, I'm going to throw out random examples, but it's pretty close. All right. The cheapest plan for the two of us is going to be 750 a month. And people are like, whoa, wait a sec. But that's with a huge deductible. I only pay a thousand dollar deductible right now. Oh, you want a thousand dollar deductible? Twelve hundred a month. Yeah. What? Right? And 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 so that's where people freeze, but they don't realize that the government, our government, as part of the Affordable Care Act, has what they call subsidies, and they will subsidize your health insurance cost. How much depends on your income. It doesn't matter what your assets are. You could have 40 million in the bank, in cash, in gold, in real estate, anything. Your net worth could be 2 billion. You could still get a subsidy because all they are looking at is what your income is. And this yeah. is key for people that are in between Medicare and retirement. And that's because probably usually, they're looking at adjusted gross, right? Or no? Right. They're yeah. looking at your gross income. Um, so people that just retire, typically their income goes down, right? Because they're retired. Right. And so when they're looking at, all right, when do I turn on Social Security? When do I start pulling from my IRA? An IRA distribution would be considered income, according to the Affordable Care Act. And so there's a game. You want to show certain levels of income. And so the more income you show, the lower your subsidy will be. But if you show, say, 40000 of income, you might get your entire health insurance covered. I uh, think wow. for a married couple, you got to know what these levels are. That's the step. You need to know these subsidies. They have what they call brackets. So if your income is above this much, we'll cover this much. And the higher your income goes, the less the government will subsidize your health insurance cost. When it first came out, I learned these formulas. And they've changed over the years. But it would become to a point where, Tony, I know you need 60000 to live, but if we just showed you $59,000 of income, your subsidy would increase by $400 a month. Think of that. That's ah. an extra four grand, and you're only reducing your income by 1000 bucks. So the, it's, it's a tricky game. But It's, it's all so about the math, as you always point out. It really you is. To, you have to figure it out. Well, people think... And this is what the lesson is. People think that I can't get a subsidy because I've been working my whole life and I, I have too much money in the bank. My IRA is almost a million dollars. I can't get health insurance subsidy. You can. It's based on what you're showing for income. So if you can use 
your health savings account. We did a, a, a show on that, how that's tax-free. That's not income. You use a Roth withdrawal. That's not counted as income. So your income level can be adjusted to reflect lower for the purpose of reducing your healthcare subsidies. Sounds like another that, reason to have a tax-free account or a, an account that doesn't count as income. Or have some cash ready to go to bridge that gap and to delay Social Security, even though, hell, this is great. I want to turn on Social Security. Delaying it, you can offset that you could reduce your subsidy because as soon as you turn on Social Security, the government said, "Oh, there's your income that raises your income that reduces your subsidy." It's it's kind of a game, but it's a it's it's a financial planning income planning strategy. Most financial advisors, Tony, won't touch health insurance with a ten foot pole. Right, right. They just don't. So, if you're planning to retire before sixty five, you need to coordinate the insurance purchase, health insurance, with your accountant, with your insurance agent, and with your financial advisor. This has to work together. Otherwise, you're going to be paying a lot for insurance. For some yeah. people, that's fine. They could pay the full amount, no big deal. But for most people, they want to reduce their costs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? If the math makes sense, uh, work with somebody like yourself. And Dan, I know, obviously, uh, you know how to figure this out and look at it and look at a person's personal situation and help them figure out, okay, the math says you'd be way better off doing this. Your insurance will cost you 400 less uh, a month. And then, yeah, huge. For a typical couple, let's say they're 64, right? So th this is when the insurance is going to cost the most, right? Insurance costs more, health insurance, as you get older. Right. So they're 64. They got a year to go before they're on Medicare, which, you know, we know what the limits are for Medicare. Um, they're like, I got a year, you know. If they could just oh, show income a certain way, they could literally get $10,000 of subsidy toward health insurance for that year. Wow. Which is a lot. It's not chump change. It's significant amounts of subsidies. And people might say, well, Dan, you're just, you know, gaming the system. I'm not, I'm, health insurance is overly expensive. The government subsidizes it for the purpose of making sure people don't go in debt just to pay for health insurance premiums. Why not? Why not use the formulas to your benefit? Because, you know, you're going to be, it's going to cramp your lifestyle, especially if you, if you got a couple more years before 65, you're going to be shifting money around. You're going to feel uncomfortable potentially, but financially it makes a lot of sense, but it can't, yeah. you can't just, you can't just, first of all, just say, oh, I can't go on exchanges. You I can't just roll money. over and right. yeah. Right. Which is what a lot of people do. Yep. So conclusion, Tony, the gap between retirement and Medicare is you know it could be tight for some it could be bigger for others and it's tricky it's tricky when it comes to health insurance so you need to know these complex tax rules you need to know how the subsidies work you need to truly begin to analyze your health insurance options because it could be thousands of dollars difference um and you know then th there there might be those that say oh i'm just going to go without that's that's the worst. I should put that as step number before step zero is get make agree that you're not going to have a gap in coverage because 64, you know, the early 60s, that's when things start to break. Yeah. And I see this with clients. Oh, I'm healthy. I don't need. No, you things go wrong, you know, just through age, just physically, you know, so I think people get that. But there's always that. Geez, I don't want to pay a thousand a month. Yeah, for health no, insurance. you have to have health insurance your entire life. That's just period. You can't right. go without. You cannot go without. Right. So once you get over that hump, then it's like, all right, I need it. Then what you need to do is make sure that you understand this complexity. And that the only way to really do that is to learn it or to bring in a team or work with somebody that that actually can coordinate financial with insurance. This is the time to bring the team together. This is the time to get your accountant in the room or on the phone with the health insurance agent because it, it, it matters. It matters. And you can't go back and fix mistakes you make. You know, that's just the way it works. The government's watching. If they're giving you a subsidy, they're going to make you reconcile this. But don't be afraid oh, of yeah. it. Don't, 
don't think of it as, you know, some sort of handout or some sort of complex thing that's only for the other guy. It's for you. If you are thinking about retiring and you're thinking, I can't because of health insurance, give me a call because that's a pet peeve of mine. I've talked about that over and over again. Um, just get the answers and and just start asking certain questions. I can talk you through it. And, and it just makes me feel good when someone can retire a little earlier than they want, especially if the only thing holding them back is health insurance. That's a big no-no. Exactly. I just wish it wasn't so complex. I wish it wasn't. Yeah, don't take it lightly, though, and work with a financial professional like yourself. Dan, this is a great show. It's a wake-up call for a lot of people out there. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? Go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. The number is 888-508-5935. I'll put it on here. Tony, we are a financial planning firm. I'm a certified financial planner. One of the key pieces is insurance. Uh, we have an insurance agency that specializes in health insurance. So we do this we're in, we, we do this as part of our service for clients. But, you know, we get a lot of questions of just, hey, can you answer this real quick? We do that, too. So don't hesitate to call us thinking you have to be a client. We, we'll give you the answers, especially, oh, you might be in a different state than Florida. Every state's different. But the, the bottom line is those federal subsidies, the health insurance marketplace is regulated at a federal level. So everyone's got to go through the same hoops. So it's worth a call. It's worth taking seriously, and we'd we'll be happy to help. So, thanks for a good show, Tony. Um, Great show, we'll, Dan. We what what we can conclude is this: you and your wife can retire because you know we'll figure out a health insurance situation. But we also can't retire retire because you're still only in your 30s. So that's the message for the <laughs> listeners here. Have a good show. We'll see you. Uh, have a good day. I mean, we'll see you guys all next week. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not an investment advice. Dan Whittle nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management Inc. and Dolphin Insurance Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.